Can I proceed? Yeah, go to go. Good morning from India to everyone present with us. It is highly motivating to see young students actively participating in all of the sessions so far. I'm very sure that highly resourceful knowledge sharing by our eminent scientists and professors would significantly enhance their understanding on the key concept of seismology and tectonics. Numerous new tools and techniques are shared and discussed by the finest seismologists of the world. Speaking of which, today's lecture would be presented by Professor O.P. Misra, the Director of National Center for Seismology, Ministry of Arts Sciences, Government of India. He's a very young and dynamic researcher and administrator. Interestingly, he is the first PhD student of Professor Dapeng Zhao, who is a session advisor of IVWGST 2021. Now, before his session starts, may I request uh, Professor Dapeng Zhao, the session advisor, to say a few words. Of how do Professor Dapeng Zhao? Okay, uh, good morning. Uh... <laughs> I have known uh, Dr. Mishra for uh, how many years? More than 20 years, right? Yeah. I think uh, he first uh, went to uh, a human university in 1998? 2000? 2000, we met, sir. 2000, in, in the 2000, month of yeah. June. Yeah, so we have known each other for more than 20 years. And uh, okay. Dr. Jia Kyle uh, introduced him to me. And uh, so uh, Dr. Mishra spent uh, four years or so, more than yeah. three years, I think, at my lab in the Ajmer University. Four and, years and again one year, six years total, five right. years. Uh -huh. And uh, during, during that period, Dr. Uh, Kaya also went there to make a visit uh, in our lab. So uh, uh, Dr. Mishra worked very hard. And uh, I think he's uh, one of the hardest uh, uh, students of, of my lab. And uh, he uh, had, uh, even now, he has very strong motivation to do research. And uh, he got very good results, in particular uh, for the uh, Buji earthquake area. And also, uh, he made the first tomography study uh, for the FARC region of Northeastern Japan, where the 2011 huge Tokoki earthquake occur, but uh, Dr. Mishila studied uh, that region well before the huge earthquake. Okay, so the result was the uh, first one, and uh, it was quite an important result. Even now, you know, the paper has been widely cited. Okay, so it's a pioneer work for uh, that uh, huge earthquake area. So that's a very important work. And also, uh, Dr. Mishila was very kind uh, student at the time, and he liked to help other people. And so uh, he had a very good relationship with the students, teachers, and also the secretaries there. And uh, so we have become a very good friend and together with uh, Dr. Kayar. So uh, I think uh, Dr. Kayar and uh, Dr. Misha are the first India scientist I collaborated with. So uh, I'm very happy about, about that. And today, I hope uh, Dr. Michela can show us better results. Yes, please. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Professor Zhao. Uh, may I request our system chairman, Professor J.R. Kyle, to say a few words. Over to Professor J.R. Kyle. Thank you, Santanu. Thank you so much. I think Professor Zhao has made us a bit nostalgic. You know, to th in, do I contacted him in in 90s or late 90s our first uh, you know interaction one to one interaction started from 2000 so but a mr went to his lab to him he he accepted my recommendation and he did his phd but what i want to say here that he is not only a great professor and teacher on tomography, not only for Indian scientists, but the, I think for the global scientists. He many PhDs and many postdoctoral scientists or many visiting scientists has learned a lot from Professor Chow. And but he had a special, I must mention here, 
he had a special love, affection, and confidence in Dr. Opi Mista. Because normally, I just uh, again I say it. Normally, when you do PhD at the same institute, you don't get any position immediately. But Dr. Zhao was so much impressed with Dr. Mishra by his research work and his, by his dynamism that within one year or so, Dr. Mishra came back to GSI and within one year or so, Professor Zhao invited Dr. Mishra as a visiting professor in his institute, in his university. So that was a great, not only love and affection, but the confidence. So that is what is our relations developed with Dr. Professor Zhao, with Indian scientists. But apart from Dr. Mishra, I also took with me another geophysicist, Dr. O.P. Singh with me for collaboration. Then I also recommended uh, Professor Sagarika Mukhopadhyay for an INSA JSPS fellowship to Professor Zhao. He also accepted and she did the work on Kilari earthquake tomography. So many, uh, you know, our start of tomography uh, work research started with his kind collaboration and kind, you know, uh, advice and everything, his guidance. So thank you, uh, Dr. Mishra. We are, we all are looking forward for your very, you know, brilliant lecture today. So over to Santanu. Uh, thank you, sir. Now let me read out a short bullet of Professor uh, Opi Mishra. Presently, Professor Opi Mishra is serving as the Director of National Center for Seismology, Ministry of Art Sciences, Government of India. Previously, he worked with ITRC Canada in a joint venture project with CMTDIL Coal India during 1992-1995. He also served Geological Survey of India as a geoscientist for about 20 years. He also worked with SARC Disaster Management Center New Delhi as the director. He has the honor of serving Premier National and International Institute as honorary and visiting professor. Professor Mr. obtained MSc Tech degree from IIT ISM Dhanbad in Applied Geophysics, PhD from Geodynamic Research Center, Ihini University, Japan in Seismology, Postgraduate Diploma in Management from Center of Education of All India Management Association, New Delhi, the Apex Body of Indian Institute of Management, with specialization in finance and management. Professor Mishra is the recipient of several awards and honors, including visiting professorship by JSPS Japan in the year 2005, National Mineral Award in 2008 for disaster risk management in applied geosciences by Government of India, ASIO Award in 2014 by IIT Roorkee, Government of India. He has more than 200 research publications, including edited books, reports, PSCL issues, roadmaps on various themes of seismology, geophysics, interdisciplinary art sciences in peer reviewed journal of national and international reviewed. Of course, it's a very short biodata, and if not for the time constraint, I would have carried on for several more minutes. Now, may I request Professor Mistra to enlighten us with his talk. Over to Professor Mistra. Thank you, Dr. Santanu. I express my gratitude to you and your team and the organizers the, in presence of my mentors, two mentors, Dr. Kayal and Professor Dapeng Zhao, uh, for getting this opportunity to speak upon seismic microgenation, an efficient tool for earthquake risk resilient structures. I have little bit deviated from the deeper structure to, to silo structures, what the policy planners and disaster managers wanted to know that. This uh, snap I have taken from the science spe spectra from Professor Zhao, and it showed the, the complex structure of the Earth, so many strata, different compositions, different variability of the all physical properties, and that certainly contribute to changes in the differential strain. Even at a deeper layer, it has an effect on the silo layers. So, now the present scenario, you have, might have aware that there is the Hugo frame for reference for disaster risk management, Sendai frame for reference for disaster risk management. 
entire agricultural world is wanted to know that what the role of the geoscientist can play in the disaster risk resilient resilient disaster risk resilient uh, structures in the in 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 by by reducing the disaster earthquake disaster risks and we know that the the seismologists or earthquake engineers wanted to understand the mechanism of the genesis of the earthquake if you diagnose the processes they can you, you can assess the strength of the culprit that is the earthquake how big it is where it, it will hit and how much damage it, it can cause so it is commonly the, the it was we, we wrote a paper in the in the international journal of geosciences about the it was invited one that earthquake risk is just a product of the earthquake hazards vulnerability and one by capacity you know the capacity is actually the wealth of the knowledge the information from various corners and capability to cope off the menace of the earthquake shaking so under this capacity the role of geoscientists become a very paramount and if you see the usgs the venn diagram the natural hazards the seem potential catastrophic and the chronic physical events and the vulnerability system that is the exposure so in our case it is the geological vulnerability seismological vulnerability of the sites and if you can manage the natural hazard and vulnerability system means if you can reduce the natural hazards and understand the vulnerability impacts then is equal to then by enhancing the capacity we can do that we can proceed to these structures so earthquake is a very sudden it is unpredictable releasing a huge amount of energy and it causes a disastrous event to 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 almost all structures and loss of the lives loss of the life stocks so many things are there i just is equal to give you this example of the 2005 mojafrabad earthquake you see the some structures completely damaged and some structures found to stand still though the shaking was the degree of shaking in this area is the same one school going chindral is trapped in the well built structure if you come for the bhuj earthquake which was more disaster in 2001 some structures are completely devastated some structure is partially devastated if you come to the the kedarna tragedy there was there a lot of the the, the the thrust of the water and the ground situations well built hotel is just found to be raised to the grounds and the trans boundary because earthquake does not respect the the geographical boundary it can hit any place of time and its rupture propagation can go beyond equal beyond the source zone depending on what is equal to what seismotectonic setting is there so in mujaffarabad pakistan the uri india in this side in the right side left side you can see some buildings are completely devastated in the surrounding but some taller buildings are stand still and uh, in the 2011 sikkim earthquake of 6.9 magnitude it is also caused devastations to the trans boundary nepal as well as in india the chichi earthquake in 1999 caused the destruction of the vital the the the, the plant this was the the bridge you can see this and uh, it lead to the huge destruction and infrastructural problems recently the ncs has done one exercise to take the statistical status that number of the deaths earthquakes in the whole world from the from the 1500 to 2020 about 160 million people died and in this last 20 years 4.5 billion people nearly two thirds of the world's population have been caught in the natural disaster means they have been affected and huge loss of economic loss about 2 billion or 2 trillion trillion damage it was there so if such recurrence losses happen due to the earthquake can you not devise a tool can you not devise a modality or model or cannot we be prepared to reduce the disasters effects so that the loss of lives and property can be protected and that is actually the challenging things and you know that how is equal to how disastrous it is if you see the x axis the equivalent moment magnitude the left axis the left side of the of the y axis and the right side of the y axis is energy and 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 the right axis is collaborative the explosive size so if the big explosive of the magnitude you can see the world witnessed 9.5 magnitude earthquake of chile in 1960 and you can see about 50 gigaton 
equivalent energy was released about 80 gigaton is released in the sumatra 2004 earthquake so in order to make earthquake risk resilient structure you might be thinking that how can you make such big energy generation how can you protect or how can you stop the losses of the buildings but our mother earth is very very protecting to us because most of the energy is being attenuated dissipated scattered by mother earth in various layers so what part of the energy shaking comes to the surface or impacting the structure that can be made an attenuation and dissipation law engineering solution can provide to mitigate the losses and that is actually the the crux of the approach by the engineers how to do that but information given by the seismologists and earth scientists so you may question say right is that why you spend so much money in the earthquake risk resilient structure there is the other way to doing that just like the other types of the disastrous events natural disaster events like cyclone like the too much rain is the flash flood or is got to all scanty water so many things are there tsunami you have already seen that so only the three processes left to us how to reduce the earthquake seismic hazards either predict or forecast the earthquake and which is not possible with the present state of knowledge because genesis and generating mechanism of the earthquake is equal to is still not well understood so development of earthquake early warning system it is also, it is the still not precise or reliable in sense that it is post earthquake early warning system once the rupture initiation takes place that means p wave recorded then we are measuring the disastrous phases with respect to the p phases and if the proper response time will be there then you can give the warning for the disastrous phases means the secondary and the tertiary and surface waves but its response time is so short so it is also not viable for us at present situation so what the third is the development of earthquake risk resilient structure and design is only equal to only authenticated approach that we can do that but earthquake prediction if you call and tell that the entire is equal to people and the world thinking that we have already achieved it but you see the 1970s 1976 tangshan china earthquake so if the if the earthquake prediction uh things we can understand that 1975 haichang earthquake of magnitude 7.6 is well predicted and the world were celebrated the success of our chinese scientists that they have given the gift to the world 1975 haichang earthquake is, is con convincingly predicted but just after one year in 1976 tangshan earthquake 70.9 found equal to miserably failed and about thousands of the houses turned into rubbles and it was not understood that how it happened so you can say that the whatever the parameters whatever the diagno diagnostic tests the scientists used for 1975 haichang earthquake was not applicable to 1976 earthquake this means that there is no thumb rule to understand the earthquake generating processes it varying from the earthquake to earthquake even is equal to even in the same place so i don't know what is the distance between the haichang and the tangshan The, the 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 aerial distances but if you can understand that just within the one year same group of scientists who have the control on understanding the earthquake generating processes of the haichang the 1976 earthquake was not not understood and that is the reason that we face the sarcastic comments by the police policy planners and by the other other group of the scientists who are not dealing with the seismology and the holy grail of earthquake prediction poses two important questions if validation of scientific theory involves predictability and we cannot predict earthquake then how valid is the science and that is quite general questions and if you cannot predict the earthquake then what good a seismologist they cannot predict the earthquake that is quite equal to natural but the problem is that there is a perception gap between the researchers ability to predict earthquakes and the present level of the science and there is a good paper in nature july 3 1997 by the japanese group of scientists that they are not going to predict the earthquake they are going to do or conduct the research to understand the physics of the earthquake and that is the reason that entire is equal to world is working for the earthquake prediction and the forecasting once the diagnostic parameters will be understood that they can predict it just like in medical technology seismologists are very clever they can use the med medical technology tools so once the mechanism of the heart 
human heart was understood they able to transplant the heart the, the, the heart they able to they able to predict the heart collapse because they know the mechanism but we are not able to understand the earthquake as a heart attack of the earth because there is not a simple diagnostic parameters there are a lot of things but at the same time so prediction means lot of the stages prediction actually passes through lot of stages it is anticipation that means you know that which zone is seismogenic active which zone is seismogenic more active less active or is equal to or seismic lull there is so we able to understand that where the possibility of the earthquake happen seismic seismo tectonic and the geology and the other informations are with us so we can anticipate that there is earthquake if you can say there is the earthquake in four arc northeast japan there will be earthquake we can anticipate there is the earthquake in andaman nicobar there is earthquake we can anticipate there is earthquake in himalaya there is earthquake why because we understand that the generating processes environment is available there whether it is a collisional collisional subduction tectonics pure subduction tectonics volcanism or intraplate associated with the sum is equal to type of structural heterogeneity so anticipation we have already done that anticipation has also justification what i mentioned you that which is equal to tectonic zone there we also achieve the third stage that expectation when the earthquake happens generally there is a lot of the recurrence uh, of the earthquake there is a return time period of the earthquake study has been done and they expect that where the earthquake due because of the so many <laughs> bigger earthquake there is a gap between the that earthquake and this earthquake today there is a paleo earthquake happens so all the things they can expect but they can expect without reference of precise location size and time so up to three stage the earthquake forecaster or predictor able to achieve this goal but authentications of the occurrences of the earthquake or authentication of expectation with reference to precise location time and its strength is not yet received and that is the reason that the world is working for achieving the third the, the, the fourth goal that is at authentication of the earthquake so in the tectonic environment we go for the i will concentrate my presentation to south asian tectonics indian indian parts as well as the the its surroundings if you see the south asia the the the, the, the physiography you can see that it is a lot of the topographic differences so many things are there but we if you go to if you try to see the details of the south asia you can find that so many faults and it is well said that the south asia is associated with the factory of faults laser folio of so many lineaments and warehouse of the weak zones and these are actually the propeller of the genesis of the seismicity in the region or the earthquake in the region of the all types micro macro disastrous non disastrous shallower deeper mid depth all things are there so we understand we expect according to according to these informations prepared and the delivered by the geoscientists so morpho tectonic structures gives us the idea we know that the seismogenesis in the collisional tectonics in the andaman nicobar belt or anywhere the subduction processes are going on volcanic processes are going on there is the seismicity and that is the frequent seismicity but some plate interior parts in the world like uh, one is the stable continental region of the india where professor kayal worked so much and which we have taken latur we have taken from this intraplate region it is also associated with the seismicity so it is devoid of the plate collision devoid of the subduction processes devoid of the volcanic recent volcanic eruptions and there is the earthquake because of the there are different formational geological structures different fold belts are there different cratons are there different rifts well rifts where uh, valleys are there so they have the structural actually defects with the structural heterogeneity may be associated with the paleo fluids or may be associated with the current neoactive tectonic and they are also generated the earthquake and disastrous earthquake the bhuj is equal to 7.6 7.7 magnitude earthquake is, is has been witnessed to the world and it was the so much disastrous and though it is equal to kilari earthquake of magnitude 5.9 or 6 in the latur it is also disastrous because of the the structures are not well built there so after the occurrence of 2001 earthquake of bhuj and 1993 earthquake of latur it has revolutionized the thought of the seismologists and earthquake engineers that how to proceed to minimize the loss of the lives so 
it was realized that the deeper structures using 3D seismic tomography supported by the empty upper crustal layers supported by empty for upper crustal layers can the play the role they can impact the, the cellular layers as well as the upper crusts but shallow structures of the sustainable engineering that means mainly the characterization of the soil properties characterization up to 30 meters of the depth that lead is equal to lead to the impacting the foundation of the structures or the dwellings or vital and crucial structures but in order to do that we have to know the proper source characterization of the zone site characterization of the zone so on the basis of that the entire south asians the number of the faults have been already mapped it was the exercise done by the ndma by the iit bombay and it is found that 1831 number of the faults was there 42 faults are of sri lanka including that and 33 zones that is new source zone in the Tibetan region they wanted to see on the basis of dispositions of the earthquake if you come forward you can see the the huge equal to amount of earthquake there the, there is no place which is devoid of the earthquakes even equal to even in the indian ocean of the different magnitudes so about 68342 total events of the varying magnitude main shocks greater than 3 is 28425 and main shocks mw is greater than 8 that is 26 done it is a joint it was a very cohesive uh, compilations of the different catalogs isc gem ndma report imd india usgs and uh, bhava atomic research centers that they have been the some stations the national center for seismology some nepal catalogs and some papers we can see that this is the so much hazardous zone in sense of the earthquake or it can you can say that it is a hot spot of the all types of the earthquake that is the indian subcontinent and uh, declustering mechanism they have been done by using the cardan and nopof urhammer approach removal of the dependent event such as the four shock is detected after occurrence of the main shocks and some of the after shock they remove and find the complete catalogs for these physical effects so seismic hazard analysis now starts from here and uh, seismic structure of the intraplate region seismic structure of the seismic subduction zone a strong motion seismology are the ingredients of the seismic hazard analysis so, so if seismic hazard analysis actually requires the deterministic seismic hazard analysis dsha probabilistic seismic hazard analysis psha india is equal to has developed the latest the probabilistic seismic hazard analysis of 2002 by by the bureau of bureau of the indian standard and also try to do by the by some researcher or the deterministic seismic hazard analysis just for the students i will give you this figure that uh, the dsa assumes a single scenario control source selected maximum magnitude m and selects minimum distance epicenter distance r assumes effect due to m and r what is there on the structures and then estimate hazard parameter pga peak ground acceleration peak ground velocity peak ground dis displacement pgd and spectral acceleration however in the probabilistic seismic hazards we consider all sources we consider all magnitude ranges we select all distances from the source to sites assume the ground motion from m to r and actually the the uh, the, the predictive equations we have to develop and uh, you know the gutenberg relations a and b we are able to consider annual rate attenuation relations estimate hazards cost for each source to the sites so there are the several stages for for preparing the deterministic and the probabilistic seismic hazards i make you more equal to more clear that if that is if the deterministic seismic hazards analysis select a controlling earthquake from the line source one area source two or line source three then is equal to then each and every contribution we have to take it and decision based on that ground motion on the great is equal to greatest interest so we consider all sources determine potential maximum magnitude earthquake at the minimum distance and compute ground motion parameters with respect to the m max and r minimum that whether the maximum earthquakes magnitude at what equal to epicentral distance it can be there for the impact from the hazards and determine critical values of the ground motion parameters from the sources and by this way we can take the various magnitude but we determine a control control combined and we we have to uh, so you have to decide a control source so here you can see the m2 and r2 is the combination of m2 and r2 produces highest value of the pga in the in the y axis this is y is the pga with reference to the log y 
of that is equal to log r distances and so identification of the characterization of sources and the expected down motion due to control source is a very tricky work because you have to take a judicious approach so estimate of maximum magnitude could be produced by any source in the vicinity of the site but it is very difficult to isolate that which source is generating the maximum magnitude earthquake which is the control source actually so the find the value of the r max correspond to m max at the threshold value of the parameters of the interest that is the pa and we found that m is equal to m max this was actually our target so it looks like everybody thinks that this the, 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 the deterministic seismic hazard assessment can be a good tool to understand the extent of the hazards seismic hazards but its calculations are relatively simple but implementation of the procedure in practice involves numerous difficult judgments as you told you that so many sources so many magnitudes it is very difficult to apply a judicious approach and even to make it possible approach it can be also not robust and not you are not able to give you give you composite idea of the disaster risk so lack of the exploitative considerations of uncertainties in the deterministic seismic hazard assessment should not be taken imply that those uncertainties too do not exist that's why there is ambiguities in these physical to processes but in the probabilistic seismic hazards psa what entire world rely on this because they are taking all the contributions together so because we do not know when earthquakes will occur we do not do not know where they will occur and we do not know how big they will occur so that cases the psa assumes many scenarios consider all magnitude this scenario consider all distances scenario and consider all effects and then is equal to then we determine the ground is equal to parameters and that's we probabilistic seismic hazards consist of the four primary steps what is equal to what india did in the 2002 presently the iit bombay with the ndm is doing our is equal to group has also done by dr mandal and 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 also ap singh done for the some parts the identification and characterization of all sources characterization of the seismicity of each source determination of motions from each source and probabilistic calculations so this requires that psa check characterize the uncertainty uncertainty in locations site frequency and effects of the earthquakes and combinations of them to compute a probabilistic different level of the ground shaking that means that our earthquake recording data the seismicity and seismic tectonic information must be equal to be very sanguine to proceed further to get the probabilistic calculations and its behavior on the ground motions so probabilistic seismic hazards analysis identification i told you the numbers of step 1 it just is equal to cartoon it has been given and uh, we able to following these four steps we do it so probabilistic seismic hazards makes me the gutenberg richter equation it a and b and also give the recurrence time of this and you use the standard error used to evaluate the conditional probability where m is equal to become m star that means the magnitude become a maximum maximum magnitude for given the epicenter distances and predictive relationship we use and we give some combining uncertainty probability computations by this is equal to equation of taken for the all sites so here this is the probability computation taken the all sites taken the all magnitudes and taken the all distances and then whatever is equal to we can get we can get the all possible distances are considered a contribution of each in the weighted by the probability of the occurrence of the earthquake and with respect to some maximum credible earthquake generator sources how equal to big impact will be there and by that way we able to calculate that particular pga value of the incidence period of the particular percentage and then the then the return period so if what peak acceleration had 10% probability of incidence in 50 years then the return period is estimated to be 475 years approximately 500 years with the given the activity factors and this is the information it was just a crude information we are doing but you know that professor jao started so that dynamic snapshots because the behavior of the each and every layer is changing dynamically because the changes of the structural heterogeneity either influenced by the internal processes or is equal to or influenced by both internal and external processes 
for silo layers there is a lot, lot of the anthropogenic activities man made activities the destroying is equal of the rock slabs and also there is so many reservoirs are there lakes are there many filling lands are taking place and after the thickness of the filling of the of of, of the uh, of the of, of some parts it becomes a very flatter to make the structure so filling of the lands haphazardly without following the scientific engineering solutions and people try to make the development through urbanizations that can lead to that so by doing all this exercise of the given 475 years the pga value of the estimated for the entire india and you can see that this is the contour map and for spectral uh, and, and 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 they they have been also try to get for the 2500 return period means if the incidence is 2 2% in the 50 years then the, it will be the return period 2475 years means 2500 years and they determined the pga contour distributions of the entire indian subcontinent regions and uh, also they try to give the disposition of expectoral accelerations which has been the impact on the structures and they given this map and on doing this exercise the india has prepared its own seismic hazard zonation map and it is zonified into four zones actually five zones but one and two has the same behaviors based on the peak ground acceleration and intensity mapping they made it the zone 2 3 4 and 5 2 is the low risk zone 3 is the moderate risk zone for the high risk zone and five is the very high risk zone now question arises that if the 59% of the total territory of the india is seismically active or seismically hazards and out of this about 10.79% of the indian land falls in the zone 5 and 17.49 in zone 4 and zone 3 30.79 so so much you can see about more than 60% is falling in the seismically hazard zone but uh, there is a big but behind it in this seismic hazard zone what is big but suppose we are belonging to zone 4 and there is the 5000 structures if those structures made by same engineers same architecture design same material will be used in that building and same typology of the building will be there in the zone 5 where is equal to where the building is the 500 then if a particular earthquake of particular magnitude occurred at a particular depth then if zonation map is correct then each and every building among the 500 should have the same damage pattern should have the same damage pattern but it is not happens that means the earthquake shaking behaves differently even in a same seismic hazard zone that means in order to prepare this probabilistic hazard map or deterministic hazard map or contouring map of the pga or contouring map of the spectral acceleration some property has been compromised and that is the reason that we have not a very very realistic the earthquake risk resilient model and that is actually the problem we have to going to solve it and this answer this answer we can going to get this answer we can going to get if you see this cartoon if the earthquake occurred and there are the four trees are there but the impact of the earthquake shaking in the four trees are found to be different are you getting me so are you getting me yes sir yes. please go ahead sir yes, yes sir okay. go ahead so the earthquake shaking in the on the four trees found to be the different you can see there is no impact on the first tree but there is a impact on the th on the all three trees but impact found to be differently what different the second tree fell down then one tree tilted another tree and another had shaking so the, the, the that means that there is the other property playing the role in the seismic zone and that is the structural heterogeneity or geomechanical strength of the soil with which the root of the tree has been coupled so if it is proper coupled with is equal to with the soil or the with the foundation material then is equal to then the impact of the earthquake shaking can be minimized and that is the reason that the the role of the understanding the processes that if the earthquake occurred in a hard rock basement then it the, the seismic wave 
has 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 no amplification and there is no big much impact on the structure if it is uh, passing through from the hard rock to the deep sediment rock then there is amplification of the seismic wave and the structure showed the impacts and it may be tilted or may be raised to the ground depending on the depending on the matching of the resonance of the frequency of the structure and the frequency of the earthquake shaking so this gives us the idea that you have to zonify we have to zonify the zones we have to zonify the seismic macro zones into a smaller zones for a detailed study and that is called a seismic microzonation so seismic microzonation is nothing but it is zonification of the available seismic macro hazard zonation into a several zones to understand what physical properties what a structural structural uh, heterogeneity lead to the amplification of the foundational materials and the amplification of the foundational materials or if it is happening at what frequency this amplification will be maximum this is actually target of doing that and this is the this is the reason that this becomes efficient tool to mitigate the earthquake risk by hazard related land use management and which is of the great use to city planners and civil structural engineers and the the demand of the seismologist has become very very high but seismic microzonation requires a uh, integrated tools we have to know the seismological parameters which are given in the column earthquake good catalogs regional seismicity false lineaments rupture modeling everything we have to go for this then we have to middle column is the geological and geotechnical information we have to have and you have to determine and then we have a thematic integration in the gis map so that no so that everybody can have the gis friendly user they can locate their house they can locate their location they can read their latitude longitude and they can read the physical property variations of the sites so what we have done the site characterization the micro tremor study using the nakamura technique to analyze the ambient noise for the silo layers to estimate the predominant frequency and the peak amplification factors corroboration with geology to the sites and then decision of the location of the boreholes for carrying out the in situ laboratory measurement of the soil samples so all steps we have done so you on see the seismic microzonation uh, everybody now india is doing the nakamura technique and they are determine the horizontal and the vertical component curves and they find the h by v ratio with a given the the frequency content and field measurement we are doing putting our seismometers at least 2 hours at a site if it is the swampy land it go more than one more, more than even 10 hours but if it is the dry then it is easily easily stabilized and you get the all the ambient noise uh, noise recording and then we do the analysis to find this way doing that the ncs national center of seismology has recognized the 30 city falling in the zone 3 and the 4 and also in the zone 5 which has been the vicinity of the himalaya and also in the in the plate interior like bhuj and we first phase 30 city were recognized by doing the comprehensive seismic microzonations presently the the four cities in the process chennai bhubaneswar mangalore and coimbatore other cities we have already done kolkata delhi gandhi dham ahmedabad bangalore sikkim and gangtok and equal to guwahati we have already completed and now we generate the these these seismo seismic microzonation map given to the engineers policy planners and is equal to and urban planners to use this in their new building design code developed by the bureau of the indian standard so our purpose is to generate the parameters so work component you can see the geophysical seismological micro tremor i have shown you down hole cr wave velocity we have done of the given is equal to bore holes and then multi channel analysis of the surface wave we are also doing a mass was to get is equal to the cr wave velocity and bore holes of the each 30 meters we have taken a, uh, of the doing for the standard penetration test and uh, we have to do the the uh, the, the seismic cone penetration test and uh, static cone penetration test and dynamic cone penetration test we also try to try axial test to know the the behavior is equal to of the rocks the rock samples how is equal to how the rock is changing what is equal to bulk density is there what is the specific gravity of there natural water content how much in that so you all information we are using to take through the the the, the geophysical geotechnical both in situ and the laboratory
it is not coming. I think slide is not moving. Slide is not moving. Slide. Okay. So sorry, there is some technical. It is not Is Uh, there is a problem in slide is not moving. OK, coming, coming. No, slide soon, no problem. No problem. Slide mode, you cannot see that. Hello, uh, Santanu. Yeah, sir. Slide yes, sir. Yes. Are, are we able to see that? Yes, sir. Please go ahead, sir. Oh, slide, but it is not in slideshow mode. It's okay, sir. Yeah. If, you yes. can, you can, uh, I think uh, it is uh, it, it retrieve back to first one if slideshow is going. So there is some problem. Okay. Yes. Okay. Sir. This way, this way it will, it will okay. Fine. So oh, geophysical okay. investigations, we make uh, uh, this. Uh, I have already done geotechnical uh, the SPT we have done SCPT and DCPT of all cities we are doing. So four cities we have already are going to submit the report and for 12 cities, eight cities remaining is proceeding by this, this uh, all estimates of the SPT, SCPT and DCPT by giving the N values to calculate the effects. And by doing that, we have taken a city of the Mangalore, I just told you that all the city of the area 520, uh, actually the area 142.5 square kilometer, this area is divided into a very small spaced grids where we have to put our micro, uh, put our seismograph for the recording the ambient noise. So 500 meter by 500 grid we have set up and then by doing that we do, we estimated the amplification map, Mangalore city and the peak uh, frequency map of the Mangalore city. And beauty of this is that if you see the Mangalore city amplification, where the more amplification is the red, here the less amplification is the actually the, the, the green. And uh, corresponding value of the amplification, we, uh, uh, the peak frequency, you found that highly amplified zone high is equal to high lesser frequency, the low amplified zone has the actually harder rock is the high frequency. And if you try to see the geology, that is the geology in the left side of the panel, a map is equal to the peak frequency and the peak amplification, means the high amplification factor and the peak frequency, we have given the boreholes. These are actually the boreholes point given in the red, red circle and Maswad point we have given in the, in the green circle. To find out the boreholes and make the sample measurement in the in-situ material, to get the SPT, DCPT and, and SCPT 
and also its sample can be measured for bulk velocity, specific gravity, all the shearing uh, shearing properties in the laboratory, and we determined the shear wave velocity at the 30 meter of the boreholes, and here is the right side panel is giving the velocity of the shear velocity of the of the Mangalore city, and you find that the maximum shear wave velocity is found to be a very much concentrated in the coastal belt, uh, concentrated in the away from this the belt, and it was about 873 to 954. So it is a very competent part of the Mangalore. Although the Mangalore is the uh, Mangalore is, uh, is the coastal coastal city, so out of the coast, the shearing velocity is found to be more. And by doing that, the drill processes we are doing 30 meter drill and then 100 meter drill for the deep, for, for deep down hole survey. And we determine by this way. The most taking all the parameters, we determined the peak ground acceleration at the engineering bed rate and also peak ground acceleration at the design base uh, at the design base. So found that this is the Jamuna River and we determine the, the all the, the peak ground acceleration at every, every level. And it was the, the two, two red is the higher zone away from the Jamuna River. And it was very much corroborated with the present uh, PGA at the surface. Means if the PGA happens at the surface, what could be the maximum credible earthquake? What could be the impact of these amplifications to the structures? And we also determine by the N, R, and uh, the shear wave velocity empirical relation, liquefaction potential of the sites. And by doing that, we we prepare the hazard index map means hazard index map you can see the yamuna river having the sediments is associated with a very equal to very high hazard impacts more than equal to more than 0.6 of the hazard index factor and the green is the least and the the, the green, green is the in between and the least is the the deep green patches so this gives us idea that where our dwelling where our infrastructures where are structures falling into that? So by this microgenation, we able to give the significant uh, uh, idea and the significant information for uh, for risk resilient strategy for safety so safety of the of the schools, safety of the hospital. These are the vital vital and crucial structures. Safety of the prisons, safety of the vital installations, and safety of the infrastructures like the bridge, the tunnels. The, uh, the 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 power plants and uh, the vital structures nuclear plants and we can see that how is equal to how it's impacted both flora and the fauna and social chaos and earthquake trauma management if you can give the information that where to make your house why not you why not you are obeying the actually the building design codes and the con and, and the and the guidelines to make the structures which is the earthquake risk make the structure which should be in the earthquake earthquake less earthquake prone zones and we should not make the our foundations of the building as i show that the coupling of the building and the and the soil property should not make a condition in the flood plain like this and that's why the drilling give the information and you should not make the structure in the fill lands by this type of the huge building uh, actually infrastructure development or urban agglomerate we have to stop it because when the earthquake setting even far away that setting is capable to amplify their foundation material to make the collapse of the building and then damage there. That's why the, we, the engineers wanted to take the information from the seismologists and the earthquake engineers that we have to, what type of the foundation material should be there, what to be the foundation design should be there, where is it going to, 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 be the, to, be the, uh, to be the engineering columns can be established. This all depends on the material heterogeneity and its corroboration with the PGA value, amplification factors, and peak, peak or predominant frequency and peak amplification factor. So by doing that, uh, we have uh, in the Sendai after the 11th, um, uh, 11th March 2011 tsunami earthquake in, in, in Sendai, we have gone from the United Nations UNISDR and we have seen that none of the building in the Sendai city raised to ground and even the school, it is reported just like 700 meters away from the, the Japan Sea coast. This school is a standstill and this is the actually what is called, this is the multi-story school. That means the sound building design code taking consideration of every design parameters, particularly of the foundation, proved that the structure will be the safer or, or the loss due to the, due to the damage of the structures will be minimized. And it is well said that 
it is it, it earthquake does not kill the people it is the structure that kills the people if the structure will be the good the structure will be earthquake resilient infrastructure will be earthquake resilient then the loss will be minimum or negligible and we can save the huge huge economic losses or recurrence losses to that so in the present scenario we have given that today is micro generation means one is to 10000 scale or it could be the seismic nano generation it could be the one is to 1000 10000 to 500 5000 or seismic pico generation maybe one is to 5000 to to 10000 and seismic micro generation it can be 1000 to 500 so here here is the actually 1000 here one zero is more so it is the if you can do the detailed study of one is to 500 then it could be falling in the seismic femto generation scale because today we have all the maps is one is to 50000 scale which is very much very much crude and very much rude we cannot believe the all the 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 detailed informations on taking the map of one is to 50000 so we have to take the detailed study within the one is to 50000 map to get the informations and uh, uh india uh, i explained to uh, my professor tapang jha that we have able to establish the 150 stations that is the the green and the and the red and now we are going to add 100 more stations this is the present scenario of the if the 250 stations will be there the indian network will be like that and this gives you the good quality of the detection of the earthquakes record of the earthquakes and then delineation of the better delineation of the seismogenic zone so our our catalog will be more precise and more complete but uh, i told you that the deeper structure seismic micro generation needs the information from the deeper structure and that is the other tools you can use a study professor jhav has explained all the tomographic uh, the, the methods some slides and i also used to see that in the bhuj area we have the very good information up to 25 km depth of the structure heterogeneity corresponding to what seismogenic faults we have already corroborated and we proved that the seismogenesis occurring in the intraplate region is due to the paleo fluids not due to a subduction and collisional tectonics or volcanic regime which is devoid of that and we determined the seven parameters vp vs poisson's ratio then the bulk velocity and crack density saturation and porosity parameters and we able to do that not only that it is also found that the recent study by dr rp singh and myself in the in the isr data that some seismicity is started to erupt create a public panic in the talala region of the bhuj area in the in the kach kach rift basin and it is the monsoon induced earthquake and it is the really very interestingly the engineer, engineers wanted to see that if there is the some lineaments and some is equal to faults which acts as a conduit and percolating the 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 rain waters or the trapped waters to the source zone then the silo earthquakes is occurring up to the 8 to 9 km so this is the one information to understand how the seismicity taking place in andaman nicobar the the disposition or the catalog preparation is very difficult because almost all earthquake occurred in japan sea as well as in the land but stations are on the on the on the land that is andaman and this is equal to this technique what we developed the the in the in the professor jao lab sp minus p depth technique we have determined the earthquakes that is called after shocks of the sumatra north sumatra and and andaman nicobar earthquake and we determined the 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 location proper locations of the earthquake because in the ocean earthquake location can be done by obs ocean water seismometer which has a constant of space and time and very costly also so we developed a technique sp minus p technique what japan four arc has been uh, investigated completely inch by inch by proper locations of the earthquake similarly in the andaman nicobar we have the we have located the earthquake using the sp minus p technique and you found that the cause of the genesis of the earthquake and also the magma chamber you can see the barren magma is associated with the appreciably low velocity zone and it is the barren eruption is taking place and here is the blue indian subducting plate and there is the huge the 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 the, the mantle of wells showing the indian plate and none of the earthquake occur below the 65 km depth but all occurs in the above the 65 km depth that means the genesis of the earthquake is also triggered by equal to by the processes of the deeper and sub crustal layers and ma magmatic eruptions uh, the 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 mud volcano erupted and we tried to understand what mechanism is working and we found that the source characterization is that 
thrust faulting and strike shift faulting, both equal to are working in this parent as well as Rangat, that is the mod volcanic area. And Himalayan region recently, we have uh, tried to uh, to understand that uh, the power plant called a Devang multi-purpose project, the India is going to make 300 meter uh, concrete dam, but this is falling within the low heat thrust and the tidding suture zone, apart from the so many MBT, MT and M MFT regional faults. So they are worried that whether their constructed dam will be safer or not. By doing that, Geological Survey of India taking these projects under my project leadership, and we made equal to this dam axis a beautifully network, though the, though the stations are very equal to less, but we have made the guarded all around the dam axis of the of the bank, that is in Mulli. And then we recorded the earthquakes, normal earthquakes around the dam axis and also the regional earthquakes, saying the ray trace passing through the dam axis, and it gives us the confidence that we can at least map the dam axis better way tomographically. So we try to see that the dam axis is, is underlain by very low velocity zone and which is found to be a ductile. It is not have energy to, to generate the earthquake. So we safely comment that the dam axis may be beneath the ductile zone. Almost all earthquake occur in the deeper, la deeper layer of 20 to 30 or 40 kilometer may be seismic energy being attenuated or absorbed by this ductile layer and dam axis may be safer. And giving all the uh, all the mapping in the all sides of the cross section, you can see the A, B, C, D, E, F. We tried to post on the actually zone and found that the Indian subduction zone is overlain by the so much uh, 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 ductile materials. There is no earthquakes in this uh, in this uh, the, the red zone, and <coughs> that's why <coughs> we given the information to the committee, seismic design committee, that this is the scenario. And engineers accepted that if this is scenario, then deeper earthquake in the Himalaya of 20, 25, 30 kilometer may not harm the structure. If it will be the structure of the dam, will be the earthquake risk resilient by taking all care of the attenuating seismic wave. I want to show the recent study of the source characterization of Northwest Himalaya, attenuation structure, and 3D seismic tomography. And uh, for this, uh, for this uh, source characterization of Northwest Himalaya and its adjoining region, geodynamical implications by my students Vandana and myself in 2019 PAPI, we published and we, we, we saw that the, the source characterizations is related to the many factors which has the, the bearing to the, the seismic moment and it's got to different frequency. So this gives you idea that at what frequency thus what type of the earthquake can be attenuated if the attenuation model will be generated. And uh, they also estimated the kappa value that is coupling coefficient and it corroborated that if the kappa is greater than 0 0.06, then the number of the earthquake of magnitude 3.2, 3.5 onwards will be the lesser. So that means coupling coefficient of the northwest Himalaya will be also found out. And the recent study by, by, by one of the colleague Prajapati and Misra by using the INSAR data to understand the geodetic magnitude and stress, stress characterization of the of the Masad earthquake of Iran. And we wanted to know that whether this magnitude determined by USGS or by U or NCS is correct or not in a plate interior part or uh, when it they, when there is the no any subduction of the subduction and collision. In that time, we try to assess the the slip in the in this Masad area and found that the earthquake occurred earthquake occurred behind the maximum slip zone. That means the harder part is there and it can be the rupture propagated to the to the, the to the to the northwest side in the in the grid pattern and the source zone also associated uh, uh, source zone and there is no slip in the either side of the main shock and it's it gives us idea that if the earthquake occurred in the area the rupture propagation will be uh, will be propagated in which direction we also corroborated the coulomb stress that uh, slide i have not given because too much slides so in high stress zone we had found that this could yield to the to the future earthquake and rupture propagation or slip will be in the highest stress zone and I, I just very much corroborated to that so recent study uh, we have done for attenuation uh, by, by me and my colleagues researchers uh, in the in the northwest himalaya because the northwest himalaya is a hot cake for indian seismologists there is a lot of the earthquake frequent earthquake past earthquake damage happened and more or less the capital city delhi is very near to the northwest himalaya so we wanted to understand the attenuation properties of the both P wave, S wave and CODA wave. And we generated a model 
that is that is uh, actually uh, just uh, published in the 2020 and it is really surprising that indian gangetic plain igp has the 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 the, diff, the high the high attenuation high uh, high attenuation factor uh, but it is the lesser than the sub himalaya and further lesser than the lesser himalaya you can see that any any alluvial materials should have the most most should have a most attenuating property but in the igp we are found that the, the sediments is not playing a major role for amplification in comparison to the tectonic zone tectonic conversion of the sub himalaya and the lesser himalaya so amplification factor is not only related to sediments but it also related to the seismogenic faults and the structural defects that can also lead to the attenuate or leakage of the energy and also works simultaneously as the storage of the strain or storage of the stress release of the strain and then we given this idea and this is most important for the designer that everybody think that the attenuation factor in the in in the in the indagogate plane must is equal to be lesser than is equal to than the sub himalayan structure it is not the case so this give you the attenuation behavior that what attenuation factor we have to consider the structure in the igp in the endogangetic plain structure in the sub himalaya or a structure lying in the lesser himalaya region but if you go to the trans himalayan belt it was the beyond equal to the mct the you can see the least attenuation it is because the crystalline rocks rocks are there so it says actually the efficacy of the attenuation tool which have been imaged that recently sir we have done the ground uh, earthquake ground motion characterization by my colleague dr babita sharma and myself and we published this paper in the pep in 2020 2020 and we found that a trans boundary earthquake occurring in the bhutan region how they impacted the northeast northeast india so this this we have taken and this we have uh, taken the different earthquakes of the different uh, macro as well as the micro earthquakes and moderate earthquakes see the the source mechanism and then we try to take the 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 case of the scenario generation and we determined the value of the pga each and every zone of the every stations we found very interesting model which we published in the pepi and it can gives you clear cut idea that the alluvial brahmaputra valley has the more has the has 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 the relatively more amplification factor in the all the all the stations that is the yolo sediment thickness so it means that the sediment considerations the structural defect and seismogenic faults should be taken into account at the time of de designing the structure that they can attenuate the seismic energy or or ground motion can equal to can be retarded if you passing through which layer so it depends on that so in the nut cell our strategy for building should be earthquake disaster risk resilient and if it is the earthquake disaster risk resilient for a particular earthquake that earthquake becomes a earthquake disaster risk proof and we have seen in sendai that multi story building is the earthquake disaster proof structure for the magnitude 9 as the seismogenic seismo tsunami genic earthquake 9 magnitude happened and that structure did not damage most structure is only damaged due to the 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 high hydrostatic pressure of the tsunami water so if you consider this for the students that if take a disaster management cycle which has the preparedness and prevention and is equal to and precautions and also the post disasters like uh, rehabilitations and evacuations but we don't know what is equal to how, what is the power of our future earthquake that's why the post disaster management is uncertain if it is the bigger we cannot equal to have, have coping capability just like we seen in the sendai in in 11th march 2021 the earthquake happened 9 magnitude that is the greatest earthquake in the annals of the japan seismological catalog and uh, due to the after effect the fukushima nuclear fire happens because the design and and everything is is is, is related to the one effect to the other so preparedness and prevention based on the information of the all deeper structure and shallower structure be followed or made the structure then 50% guarantee is that that earthquake risk will earthquake disaster risk will be reduced and and we can mitigate the losses of the property and the people and by that way you can have a sound structure so our main is equal to ep log of this my talk is the better earthquake source characterization seismic attenuation structure seismic velocity atlas seismic strong motion atlas need to be assimilated using the present and past seismological data
And that's why the earthquake recording and detection of the earthquake should be precise and very reliable. So advanced level 3D tomography to assess a crustal heterogeneity that we have done the tomography for the vital structures of the dam. That, that is fine image tomography Professor Jha used to mention for a shallow scale. Then we can determine the A and B value, fractal dimension, Poisson's ratio, all the attributes to the crusts we can measure. And earthquake neither be predicted with present state of knowledge, nor be stopped because of the normal processes of the earth. So generation of seismic, geo, seismo geophysical, geotechnical inputs for the development of earthquake risk resilient codes for structure and infrastructures through detailed seismic microgenation or detailed seismic pycogenation is in need of an hour. And I think the future will be assured just like the possibility of the Sendai after the earthquakes 11 March 2021, you can see all vital structures are stand still. Only the some structures are damaged. So we have, uh, I will stop it here. It is a thank you very much for giving the time to me. I'm ready to answer you if you have a question. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Professor Mr. Sir, for your detailed talk on system microorganism. Now, may I request uh, our session advisor, Professor Tapingzo, uh, for its comments. Over to Professor Tapingzo. Hi, uh, Dr. Mishra. You are uh, thank you very much for a nice, nice lecture. And uh, you have done, I'm very happy to see that. You have done many uh, nice works. You uh, just showed uh, one slide showing uh, the national size of network for the whole India region. Yeah, yeah. Can you show that to me? Yes. I wonder what's the station interval of the network? The, the distance between stations. Yeah. Uh, what is the question, sir? What? The station interval. Yeah, it the, is uh, uh, not uniform. Uh, somewhere in the Delhi, it is about uh, th uh, 20 kilometers in Delhi, in capital region, that is, you can see the cluster. But uh -huh. normal, it is the 100 to 150 uh, station uh -huh. interval is there because we have to make the network first sparse and then we make it denser. So we try to put the network in the periphery and then slowly we wanted to fill up the gap. So it is not so. So uniform sense because area is 32 lakhs 87,248 square kilometer. India is big. So by that way, yeah. the, the, the distribution is uh, space wise is not satisfactory. But this skeleton we made and we slowly and slowly making it denser. So this is a permanent permanent network, right? Yeah, uh, 150 is a permanent seismic, seismic uh, network, permanent. And how long has been this network operating? How long? How long uh, has it worked? Uh, actually, uh, the network started to work in 1898 after the uh, earthquake of 1897 Silong earthquake. But uh -huh. after that, uh, uh, we we now working. So it was from 1898 to till date and round the corner, the network is being monitored by the NCS uh, uh, CRS, Central Receiving Center. So it okay. has a long sustainability. Earlier it was the analog instrument. Now we change it to digital instrument. Earlier it was manual monitor. Now we make it the real time VSAT monitoring. So all the data is ported, uh, uh, transported from the site to the our CRS, Central Receiving Center at NCS. Okay. So you could also recall the teleseismic events, right? Yeah, yeah. We have also teleseismic events uh, from okay. uh, uh, starting from Chile to Alaska to many our uh, uh, our big big earthquakes we are also doing, but those magnitude is five and above. Tell us okay. I remember uh, some time ago I uh, read a paper written by uh, some Indian scientists showing the nationwide three dimensional model of a seismic velocity. Yeah. As with uh, with uh, such a new network recording both local and teleseismic events. You can also construct a 3D anisotropic tomography, as uh, Professor Kyer mentioned. Uh, uh, I wanted to discuss with you actually uh, with this network and taking the regional teleseismic data. I wanted to create the seismic tomographic atlas of the country, and uh, mm. for this first uh, velocity atlas will be there, and also the strong motion. Sir, the all stations also 
associated with the a strong motion seismograph that is accelerograph also so we also try to make the accelero uh, a strong motion atlas for the country and for this we make collaborate to make the atlas for the country uh, of the velocity tomography atlas and the a strong motion atlas but the question is the very uh, uh, high analysis to eliminate the bad quality of the data so high quality of data will do that so we will do uh, and if an isotropic atlas it can be third edition we have a big team but you but group is needed to be well trained for that and it is the future yeah. program i will take up as a challenge involving the different institute of the country okay that sounds great and yeah. you you okay. help us and you help us and guide us yeah i will have it, have it to, to do if you like if i need okay, very good. i need yeah, i need it right. definitely i need yeah so let's keep in touch thank you thank you thank you sir Ah, thank you, sir. Now may I request our session chairman, Professor Jair Khan, for his remarks. You are asking me? Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, what to say? Dr. Mishra, you have given us a very detailed account of microgenation, seismic hazard, mitigation plan, and everything. I think our all participants are very much benefited with your wonderful deliberation and wonderful you know ex explanation of different uh, work in different uh, tectonic setting it was wonderful in more one war now as professor Zhao has advised now i think uh, you being in the helm of affairs in the minister of our science we hope uh, more and more you know uh, like uh, work like this in future as you have already uh, you have in your mind that anisotropic uh, map and velocity map and other things so i think uh, now we have got uh, all broadband stations in the country and it was all analog previously before 2000s you can say 1996 we have started the digital seismograph so now the data quality must be good and all real time data so with this good data set, I think you are there and we expect or we look forward more refined, more and you know, more work from you. So thank you so much for wonderful deliberations. Thank you so much. Over to Santan. Okay, thank sir. you, sir. Thank you, sir. Now may I request uh, our special guest, Professor Mohammad Farooq from King Abdul Aziz University, Saudi Arabia. Over to Professor Farooq. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes, 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 sir. Okay. I'd like to thank uh, Dr. Mishra for this nice talk. Uh, I actually, I, I, yeah, actually, I, uh, I see very integrated uh, studies uh, uh, composing of all types of of, star, of work in seismology. Uh, you did everything. You did everything from from the. <laughs> From the yeah, from the very beginning, the work to up to I don't know how to say. Uh, so I would say I would like to thank you for your introduction for prediction and then your hazard uh, assessment uh, model. Uh, uh, but uh, actually, I don't have a question, but I have a comment about your uh, hazard uh, assessment uh, analysis. Uh, yeah, you you, have, you take into account the all the catalog of earthquakes, uh, but uh, I, 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 I think uh, the attenuation model should be taken into consideration in the in your uh, uh, in your model, including the site effect for every station. You should have a site site response, the uh, amplification of every station should be included in the. Uh, I think you did it. You did it. Yeah. But after that, I found other other studies uh, concerning the attenuation model. The, the, the H over V method, uh, different study. So, did you take into account this amplification in your other uh, study, or it is different? No, no, it has been taken actually in the uh, the ground predictive equation. Actually, uh, GPE, we taken the you know the the uh, Boer and Atkinson they have taken. Similarly, we have tried to many set to generate the the attenuation equation for that. Okay, so uh, for it is a city wise. So particular for particular area now we have to 
extend it to the city city wise for for attenuation uh, attenuation structure attenuation relation okay um, of course without attenuation you cannot uh, expect the degree yeah. of the damage so yeah, so exactly. it, so so it is needed to to understand that site characteristics and site attenuative factor so that that is also both needed yes i think uh, yeah it's a good work so i would like to thank you again for this uh, and uh, i hope good luck for you for the next uh, sadr inshallah thank you very thank much, you very much. Thank, thank you for long time uh, after the going uh, back to our country professor yes. thaw had made a very nice uh, connect yes. connect to us as a as a advisor of this international webinar dr kal and all we are now work together the entire world is together seismologically we have to overcome the work overcome the yes. losses okay yes yes <laughs> thank you very much yes, take care of very my, happy duty my, work my, so i have to make <laughs> my regards to you my regards to family thanks thank you very much sir can you take some questions from the attendees yeah please yeah offer to dr antara for question and answer session thank you sir yes first of all i would like to thank uh, professor opimisha sir for enlighten us with such an informative talk sir uh, there are a lot of questions but i am going to read out only two questions so may we proceed sir yeah please thank you sir you so can first, send me you can send me other questions in my email yes sir i sure. i will give them answer okay 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 sir so the first question is can the site amplification characteristics derived from microzonation techniques offer a clue or relative inference about paleo seismicity of the region i i i think uh, the site amplification uh, factor gives a cumulative idea not in segregation segregation of the paleo effect but certainly if the region is associ e region is associated with so many past earthquakes and now generating the earthquakes the 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 paleo informations can be in a, in a in a qualitatively you can tell that but not quantitatively so it's it gives you idea that some channel flow sometimes of the new tectonic activities or or sometimes of the the fault gauge all informations can be interpreted that why amplification is taking place at the site but not give the information that amplification is only because of the particular factor okay thank you sir uh, so the next question is how seismic microzonation will be helpful in an already built up environment like large cities where there is very less scope to change or modify the building and other important structures a uh, very good questions uh, this is seismic uh, microzonation study is for urban agglomerate which are the newly going to form but if it is the older city older structure there is a other engineering solution called retrofitting and based on the retrofitting means there are the supportive walls based on the foundational information by the microzonation so without the disturbing the original wall and original uh, structure you can have the side wise structure can be can be made for protecting the walls and the pillars okay so that newly built pillar and walls must be followed by the amplification and predominant frequency behavior of the site where new wall and the pillar should be constructed so that will be retrofitting processes so retrofitting can be done and then the building can be protected we have done the many old low old hospitals like in jammu professor arya has done it this type of the retrofitting of the structures okay so okay. these these are the actually the way to apply seismic microzonation information for the supportive uh, protection thank you sir anything more you can ask i am free just now <laughs> okay so the next question sir last question i am going to ask so last question is is a nakamura technique a, a valid technique for estimating the amplification i think uh, it has a lot of the proven track history of success you know the japan there is the bullet train has been uh, the line the bullet train line has been built and initially has done it but uh, nakamura technique give us the the idea that is the preliminary idea even if but after the drilling in seismic microgenation it has been proved if it is not proved we are taking also the information from the geotechnical 
that is after drilling so nakamura technique is of course a guiding principles to move ahead for getting the predominant predominant frequency and maximum amplification factor where to drill the bore hole that can guide and it was it, it matched in our cases we found that the high peak frequency corresponds to harder rock okay and uh, low amplification it correspond to harder rock similarly reverse is true and that's why you drill the bore hole get got the sample in all types of the bore holes and then we do the geotechnical experiments in the field and found the density and specific gravity of the of the uh, of the of the rock shearing strength of the rock and it has also been corroborated so we can say that nakamura technique is a powerful tool for us okay thank you sir sir that's all for today's session thank you sir thank over you. to dr santan guru uh thank you sir uh, now we have come to the last session and uh, last uh, last part of the session uh, now may i request dr anesha uh, for vote of thanks over to dr anesha thank you dr shantanu borwa sir uh, good morning from india it is a great privilege for me to propose a vote of thanks to all who have helped in making this technical session a resounding success on behalf of csi neeft and the entire organizing committee of ivw gst 2021 i anvesha datta hazorika extend my sincere thanks to the speaker of our today's session dr op mishra for kindly accepting our invitation and for delivering such an interesting and informative lecture on the topic seismic microzonation an efficient tool for earthquake risk resilience structures thank you dr mishra for enlightening us and delivering such a comprehensive talk on seismic microzonation and sharing with us your valuable findings it was indeed quite helpful for all of us i take this opportunity to specially express my deep regards and gratitude to our honorable director dr g narahari shastri sir for always encouraging us and providing opportunities to organize such events i also express my heartfelt thanks to all our honorable resource persons our international advisor of this workshop dr andrew j michael from us geological society for his kind assistance and support towards this event I also express my gratitude to session advisor Professor Daping Jao for gracing us with your honorable presence and for your enormous support and enthusiasm towards this event. I also express my special thanks to our special guest Professor Muhammad Farooq from King Abdul Aziz University Saudi Arabia for sparing your valuable time and gracing us today for this technical session. I also thank our session's chairperson Professor Jair Kayal and co-chairperson Dr. Saurabh Borwa for being constantly connected with this program and for their persistent support and valuable suggestion. My deep sense of appreciation and thanks to all the participants for their active participation and overwhelming response towards this event. Last but surely not the least, I thank the convener of this workshop, Dr. Shantanu Borwa sir, for his constant perseverance and for formulating the splendid idea and arrange a forum for the interaction of the scientific community across the globe. We fervently desire all of your presence for the next technical session of this virtual workshop, which will go live at 7 p.m. Indian Standard Time. The speaker for the next session are Dr. Uh, Kendra Johnson and Dr. Shyamsi Chandrasekhar from Gem Foundation, Italy. They will deliver a talk on building a probabilistic seismic hazard analysis input model. Uh, once again, I thank you all for being with us today. Uh, have a wonderful day ahead. Thank you and namaskar. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.